In this video, I want to introduce polar coordinates. Many of you probably saw this before in high school, in secondary school. But we're going to use this as a, a way of introducing more sophisticated uh, coordinate systems, such as uh, cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates. These are the curvilinear coordinate systems. So polar coordinates are usually used for um, rotational motion in uh, two dimensions. Um, we have some vector. And uh, instead, we can represent it in xy coordinates. But in polar coordinates, we represent this vector in terms of r and theta. r is the length of the vector. Theta is the angle it makes with the x-axis. We also introduce two unit vectors, r hat and theta hat. r hat is in the direction of the vector r. And theta hat is perpendicular to that direction in the direction of increasing theta. Both r hat and theta hat then depend on theta, because as you move this vector, the um, direction of these unit vectors also change. Um, the vector r itself is just going to be, can be just represented by the length of the vector times the r hat unit vector. Okay, so simple representation of R. Okay, so what is the relationship between um, uh, polar coordinates and Cartesian coordinates? Many of you probably know that we have uh, X equals R cosine theta. So the X coordinate is equal to R cosine theta, and the Y coordinate is equal to R sine theta. Okay. Um, also, I would like to have the relationship between the unit vectors, the polar coordinate unit vectors and the Cartesian coordinate vectors. So the uh, i, j unit vectors can be written anywhere in uh, space. There's always the same. So I can put it here, say, this is i, and along the y direction is the j unit vector. So what is the relationship between r hat theta hat and i and j? Well, we can write r hat then is equal to the um, cosine of the angle. So cosine theta times i and then plus sine theta times j. So that's just some trigonometry here. The other uh, unit vector, theta hat, is uh, minus sine theta i plus cosine theta j. OK, as we see here, r hat is a function of theta. i and j are independent of where you are. But r hat is a function of theta. And theta hat is also a function of theta. So we can look at the derivatives. We have uh, normal derivatives here, because r hat and theta hat are just functions of a single variable. So dr hat d theta. The derivative of cosine theta is uh, minus sine theta. The derivative of sine theta is cosine theta. So dr hat d theta is just theta hat. And then the other derivative, d theta hat d theta, minus sine theta becomes minus cosine theta when you differentiate. Cosine theta becomes minus sine theta. So this is just equal to minus r hat. OK, so we have the uh, relationship between the derivatives of these uh, polar coordinate unit vectors and the polar coordinate unit vectors. OK, the, what I want to do in the remainder of the video is figure out how to write uh, d dx and d dy partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y in terms of polar coordinates. So to do that, we need to make an application of the chain rule. So let me try and show you how that works. We're going to introduce a uh, scalar function f 
which is a function of x, and then introducing polar coordinates, x now is a function of r and theta. And it's a function of y, which is also a function of r and theta. So I would like to apply the chain rule to f. The easiest application of the chain rule here would be to differentiate f with respect to r and to differentiate f with respect to theta. Eventually, we're going to want to know how to write the derivative of f with respect to x and the derivative of f with respect to y. And we'll, we'll do that by inverting the uh, system of equations that we get. So this is a nice exercise in matrix algebra. So let me show you then how it works. So let's use the chain rule to find the derivative of f with respect to r. So we have the uh, partial of f with respect to r. Using the chain rule, that will be partial of f with respect to x times partial of x with respect to r plus partial of f with respect to y times partial of y with respect to r. Okay? Application of the chain rule. But partial of x with respect to r we can do, that's just cosine theta. Partial of y with respect to r we can do, that's just sine theta. So we have cosine theta, partial of f with respect to x, plus sine theta, partial of f with respect to y. Okay? So we got df dr, and then we've seen we're getting df dx and df dy. That's eventually what we want to solve for. So uh, in addition to df dr, we need df d theta. So partial of f with respect to theta, by applying the chain rule, will be partial of f with respect to x, partial of x with respect to theta, plus partial of f with respect to y, partial of y with respect to theta, uh, partial of x with respect to theta will be minus r sine theta, so minus r sine theta, partial of f with respect to x, and partial of y with respect to theta is r cosine theta, so plus r cosine theta, partial of f with respect to y. Okay. Um, this is the equation for partial of f with respect to r, has a partial of f with respect to x, and a partial of f with respect to y, on the right-hand side, what we really want to know is what is df dx and df dy. So the easiest way to invert this is to write it as a matrix equation and then find the inverse of the matrix. So what is this uh, matrix equation? We have um, uh, df dr and df d theta a uh, two by one matrix on the left, and then we have a uh, two by two matrix times the two by one matrix df dx and df dy. So this is equal to the two by two matrix from the first equation will be uh, in the first row, cosine theta, sine theta. And in the uh, second row, minus r sine theta, r cosine theta. And then the right-hand side is, is the df dx and the df dy. Okay, so this is our matrix equation. Um, if you're not familiar with matrices, have a look at the appendix. If you've taken my matrix algebra course, this is uh, simple for you. 
uh, we want to solve for the fdx and the fdy. So we can do that by multiplying both sides on the left by the inverse of this 2 by 2 matrix. Um, so we can write then df dx, df dy, and then multiply the left by the inverse of this matrix. To invert a 2 by 2 matrix, you divide through by the determinant. So the determinant is r cosine squared theta minus minus is a plus. So r cosine squared theta plus r sine squared theta is r. We divide through by the determinant, so we have a 1 over r. And then the 2 by 2 matrix, you switch the diagonal elements, so it becomes r cosine theta, and then uh, cosine theta. And then you negate the off diagonal elements, so it becomes minus sine theta and r sine theta, okay? And then we multiply the inverse on the left, so this will be df dr df d theta. Okay, and that gives us what we want. Uh, I can write it out explicitly. So we have df dx. Uh, we have a 1 over r, r cosine theta, so that's cosine theta, df dr. And then a minus sine theta, df d theta. Okay, and finally we have df dy, which is the second row here. So 1 over r, r sine theta is a sine theta df dr. And then a um, 1 over r, uh, sorry, let me see, let me go back. So we have df dx is 1 over r, r cosine theta is a cosine theta minus sine theta over r. Okay, so this is an important term. Uh, this term you need because of units, so x is the length, r is the length, otherwise the units of this equation is wrong. Okay, so let's go back to the second row. So we have df dy, um, we have now 1 over r, r sine theta is sine theta df dr, and then 1 over r cosine theta df d theta, so plus cosine theta over r df d theta. Okay, that's uh, the main result of these uh, differential operators. So what this is telling us now is that we've derived uh, partial with respect to x, d dx, is given in terms of cosine theta d dr minus sine theta over r d d theta, and d dy is given in terms of sine theta d dr plus cosine theta over r d d theta, okay? Um, this is useful in two dimensions. In three dimensions, this will be uh, very important when we do cylindrical and spherical coordinates because it will tell us how to represent the del operator, uh, how to get the divergence, the curl, all those uh, differential operators in three dimensions. Okay, so let me summarize. Here we're talking about, I'm introducing polar coordinates. We have um, uh, a uh, vector then is represented in terms of its length and the angle it makes with the x-axis. We have unit vectors, r hat and theta hat. Now they're functions of theta, is very important. And I showed you then how to get the uh, ddx and the ddy differential operators in terms of polar coordinates theta and r. A little bit sophisticated. Probably something you didn't do in high school. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.